day Professor Aliyev. In this video I am going to present my hard problem assignment. First chapter was assigned to me. Shortly this chapter is about a fascinating formula discovered in 17th century by Christian Huygens and Blaise Pascal. Gambler's ruin formula. This chapter illustrates its applications by giving examples such as lawsuit of Zarin the Commissioner, elections of chairsman and estimating the average travel of a photon from the center of sun to its surface. The name first misled me to the impression that I would learn how to count cards or maybe guessing in casino using the formula, but the gambler's dream formula uh, is different. However, the case is as following. It relates to cases where two players A and B play a game of chance. They stake one unit of money on each gamble until one of the players goes broke. The gambler's ruin formula gives the ruin probability for each of the two players. Uh, then this chapter goes on by analyzing the facts in the famous lawsuit of Zarin Commissioner that the Zarin got unlimited credit line from Casino and he was cut off only when his gambling debt passed the three million dollar mark. He was then discharged of debt by the state law and after the court, Zarin received a federal tax assessment claim from the Internal Revenue Service demanding tax payment on the sum of $3 million, which had been defined as an income. However, he was dismissed from the taxes on the portion of that debt that had been discharged by the casino. The reason of which mentioned in the chapter is Zarin stated that uh, there was no cash money in exchange in between only the casino chips for gambling. And only because court didn't properly evaluate the monetary value of the chips, it was happened. The gambler's ruin formula enables us to quantify the monetary value of the loan. Zarin was playing the, the game of craps, a dice game played with two dice. You can make debts in different ways. He preferred so-called pass line bet. The probability of winning by betting uh, pass line method is pass, pass line method is approximately 0 0.493, and similarly the the players losing or casinos winning probability is one minus that probability 0 0.507. So when the events turn out turns out in favor of player, he doubles the amount of bets, otherwise obviously gets nothing. Then chapter proceeds by explaining the role of formula in this case. This is classical gambler's ruin formula, probability of a b one min oh, sorry one minus q divided by p to the power a divided by one minus q divided by p to the power a plus one. Here, A is the amount of the unit of A amount of money that player starts with. B is the how much from targeted A is. P is the probability of bankroll increases by one unit. Q is the bankroll decreases by one unit, which is one minus P also. And A plus B is the target stake that the player wants to achieve. And PAB is the probability that the gambler reaches his target stake of A plus B without going broke. Also, there is a property, interesting property, that P, when P equals Q, which is only when 1 divided by 2, uh, formula is can be seen as A divided by A plus B. Then, it is stated that the most reasonable move would be to bet as much as possible, which is our indeed. And it has been calculated that credit line of $3 million, this value is $195,000. So to achieve max probability of winning target, the best thing the player can do is to bet outright or to house limit. Zarin did the same, he bet the house limit of $15k each time. And let's assume that 15k dollars is one unit and 3 million dollars converted to units is 200 units of money. 
and it stated that in the chapter that the player will owe nothing to the casino if he goes broke uh, I'm quoting and the player will go home with a profit of B units of money if he increases his bankroll to A plus B units of money then um, there is also one other another formula expected value of gain which is as follows U A B is B multiplied by probability of increasing A B plus zero multiplied by decreasing the stake. The A B is the same as previous A B. Now to to apply this formula we need to approximate B. As we said earlier, we need to take the maximum value to to be bet and the, let's not B star as maximized value of B. If we put it to the formula, we get approximately 1 divided by ln 2 divided by P. And if we again apply B star in the formula, U, A, U of A and B star, we will approximately get E to the minus 1 divided by ln 2 divided by P. By using this uh, U expected value formula, we can rewrite Gamble's ring formula as follows. You can see on the slide. After rewriting formula, we can factor out Q divided by P to the power minus A for the big values of A. And of course, Q divided by P is more than 1. And we can see from the values. Uh, next slide for a large value of a as we can see we get b divided by 2 divided by p to the power b so in order to get the results we need to take derivative of this formula with respect to b and uh, assign to 0 which gives us that b is b star and the probability will get us we will get the probability as e to the minus 1 or approximately 0 0.3679 if we apply these results to the Darin's case with variables a equals 200 then the previous probabilities we get that the, pro the b star maximized value of b is 35 and your expected value of gain is 13 this means that the value of the credit line extended by Casino is about 13 units of money and each unit is $15,000 so we can conclude that $3 million credit line extended to the Zarin by the Casino can be valued at about $195,000. Now let's take a look at the case of elections of the chairperson of a committee consisting of an N person. Uh, the case is like this. There are n people and the new chairperson can be chosen from n minus 1 people. Probability of being chosen is 1 divided by n minus 1. The method of choosing is by fair coin. Heads means pass to the right, tails means pass to the left. And the, the person who hasn't received any coin, he ha when the person never receives the coin is the new chess person uh, the probabilities uh, are given in the chapter as follows uh, first of all let's denote the pivot person as rows which, which is the same as in the chapter uh, person to the left is left person to the right is right let's denote r the probability that the coin first goes to the right rather than to the left S, the probability that the coin will travel around the table from right to left without landing at rows when it has first gone to the right. S is also represent the probability that the coin will go around from left to right without landing at rows when it has first gone to left rather than right. And all these probabilities given, we can find the probability of rows being chosen as chairs person like this, R divided by S plus 1 minus R multiplied by S we get s so if we can show that s equals 1 minus 1 divided by n minus 1 
then we, we have proven that lottery is fair. So in order to prove this, we use classical gambler's ring formula. And the result is like this, A divided by A plus B. Uh, as we stated earlier, the property when the P equals Q, uh, gambler's formula is as follows, A divided by A plus B. And we get 1 divided by N minus 1, which proves that uh, lottery is fair. Uh, also, for the last, uh, there was given an example of drawing cards walk on a line or on higher dimensions with absorbing barriers or random walk. Uh, it is also used to estimate the average travel value of a photon from the center of the sun to its surface. Uh, how, unfortunately, uh, this video is already too long, uh, so I I wanted to talk much, but no time for that. Thanks for listening and that's it.